So we have been introduced to our three main trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. And we've seen that if we have a right triangle, uh, we can define these as we've got the opposite leg, the adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the third side that is not one of the legs, not part of the right angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We've also defined our three co-functions, and that is cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And they're just the reciprocal of the sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine flipped around becomes cosecant. Cosine flipped around becomes secant. Tangent flipped around becomes cotangent. Okay? So we have these things called identities. Now, something happened to this table. I don't know what happened. So if you have these notes, uh, fix these or just cross the table completely out. Yeah, it should be cosine is 1 over secant of t, t being the angle here. And sine goes with cosecant. So a little typo there. Sorry about that. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. And then these ones here need to be fixed. Cosecant flipped around is sine. So it's 1 over sine t. And secant flipped around is 1 over cosine of t. All right. So those are called the reciprocal identities, okay, that when we put it 1 over a fraction, it just flips it. And we'll see this more. Also, we can see that the cosine of an angle is just the sine of the other angle in the right triangle. So in other words, the cosine of this angle A is the same as the sine of this other angle over here because the adjacent of A becomes the opposite of B or whatever angle this is. So, All right, well, well, we'll see more of those as, we, as time goes on. So now we can see also we can, uh, we can find sine, cosines, and tangents with our calculator. So if we want to find sine of an angle, we have a special way of finding some angles like 30, but we can also use our calculator. Okay, so we're going to find some angles here. So on our calculator, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to mode, and we want to make sure that we are in degrees. So... There we are. So my, I'm using a little emulator on the uh, on the iPad here, so it'll look a little different. But we'll enter that into degrees. All right. So if I want to find the sine of 30, I'll hit sine of 30. Enter. And there it is, 0.5. Now if I want cosecant of 30, cosecant of 30 is... 1 over the sine of 30. So we're going to do 1 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And that is 2. All right. Now, how about secant of 2 pi over 3? Now this, or I'm sorry, cosine of pi over 5 first. So this is in radians, so we need to go change the mode. And so we're going to go over here to radians, enter. So now we're in there, so we're going to go second, quit. And so we want the cosine of pi over 5. So cosine of pi, and you're going to have a pi key on your calculator. It's right above this uh, caret key. You've got to hit second because it's in a different color there. And we want pi divided by 5. And that gives us 0 0.8090, so, so on and so forth. Now we're going to round it off. And uh, typically, we want to have four decimal places there. So we'll do 0 0.8090. All right. Next, we're going to have the secant of 2 pi over 3. And so uh, secant is 1 over cosine. So again, we're going to do 1 divided by cosine. Secant and cosine go together. And we're going to have 2 pi divided by 3. 2 pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi divided by 3. All right. Now, you can also use this in Desmos, and it looks a little prettier, but uh, 
Uh, this is how we do it in our calculator. And we get negative 2. All right, well, we're going to leave it at that. We're not going to worry about the degrees, minutes, and seconds there. Let's, uh, um, you, you can get them there uh, from the math menu if you want to do degrees, minutes, and seconds. But for right now, let's, let's, let's skip that. All right, so not going to be too important for us right now. The key takeaway is that if we know the angle, we can find the sine or cosine or tangent or all these other ones using the calculator. It'll tell us what the ratio of sides has to be. So how can we apply this? Well, now we can use this because we want to be able to find missing sides and missing angles, all right? So if we have a situation here where we have um, some missing sides in a triangle that we want to find, uh, we've got a few steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to decide which trig function will help us the most. Then we're going to substitute into one of these. We've got three spots. We've got an angle. We've got two sides. An angle and two sides. We'll substitute the things we know, and we'll solve for the things that we don't. All right, let's see how this works. So first we want to find the missing lengths of this triangle, all right? So we have a triangle. It's got a few missing sides. It's got 7 pi over 36 as the angle. Sometimes we'll be have this in radians, sometimes in degrees, all right? If it's got a pi in it and it's not, uh, it doesn't have a degree symbol, then it's clearly radians, all right? So, uh, well, here's the key. We know this angle over here, angle B, okay? So imagine you're standing on the big field here. You're standing at this corner. This is what we call our reference angle. And uh, we want to find, uh, let's say we want to find this side right here. Well, this is the hypotenuse, right? So let's call this maybe x, the hypotenuse. And uh, down here, we're also going to want to find y, the adjacent. So to find this first hypotenuse side, we want to use the side that we know and the side that we're looking for, all right? So side that we know, this is on the other side, so this is the opposite. So we want to use one that we know, one that we don't. So we have opposite, we have hypotenuse. Well, which ratio is opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that is sine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use sine and we're going to make a sine equation. So we know the sine of our angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, I always want to start with kind of the, the most basic, the formula level here. And then we're going to fill in what we know. We have the sine of our angle, which is 7 pi over 36. So 7 pi over 36. Sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, how big is the opposite? The opposite is 15, and the hypotenuse is x. So we have 15 over x. Well, we need to find out what this is. What is the sine of 7 pi over 36? Punch this in your calculator and make sure you're in radians. Give it a try. Plug this into your calculator, and it will give you 0 0.5736. That's 15 over x. All right, leave that number in your calculator, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so, but we, whenever we write this down, we want to write it down to four decimal places. Okay, well, how do we solve this? Uh, well, we got x on the bottom here, and, and we need to get that, uh, get rid of that fraction. So you can think of this a couple of ways. One nice way to think of it is to think about it as cross multiplying. If we, uh, we put this over one, it's still worth the same. So if we cross multiply, we get one times fifteen equals this decimal point times x. So zero point five seven three six times x. And now that should be an easy equation to solve. We got some number times x. We want to get rid of that number, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. 0 0.5736. 0 0.5736. All right. 
And we can let our calculator do the work there. If we divide that out, best to use your answer key there. And we get 884.03 equals x. So we found the hypotenuse there, 884.03. Now we need to find the adjacent. And we could reuse this side, but it's better, a good habit to not reuse this number you just found. For one, that's been rounded off now. And also if we made a mistake, we don't want to reuse something that's a mistake. Okay, so let's, we were looking for the adjacent and we know the opposite, adjacent opposite. Which one uses adjacent and opposite? Well, we look at our list, or think through our list, and that's, uh, we have adjacent over opposite. Well, opposite over adjacent is tangent. Okay, so that one uses opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use tangent here. So tangent of our angle, no, we'll just write tangent theta, is opposite over adjacent. And so tangent of 7 pi over 36, so we fill in the angle. Equals the opposite, which we know, 15, over the adjacent, which we don't know. We'll call it y. And now we can go to our calculator, and let's enter, make sure we're in radian mode, enter the tangent of 7 pi over 36. And I'm going to go over to my calculator here, my Desmos calculator. And we hit functions, tangent of 7 pi divided by 36. And we get 0 0.7002 equals 15 over y, all right? And we're going to go ahead and put that over 1. And now we can cross multiply. We've got 0.7002y equals 1 times 15. And divide by 0 0.7002. Now notice this, by the way. Notice that all that happened was the y and the 0 0.7002 traded places. This is actually a really useful property. So a quick side note on that. This is a useful note, all right? If you take any proportion, a over b equals c over d. And uh, if we want to, we can swap these two diagonally. This is the same as D over B equals C over A. So we can trade these two here. Okay? And, and, and notice that if you cross multiply, you're still going to get A times D equals B times C. A times D equals B times C. So why is that useful? Well, by understanding that, once we kind of have this situation here, we could say, you know what? These just swap. So we don't really need to go through all this. You can if you want. Uh, but we might just skip all that right there. Say goodbye to that. And all we really need to do when we're doing this is if the variable ends up on the bottom, well, then all we need to do is uh, just swap those two places like that. And so this is what we end up with. You know. Put a one there if you want, but see that those just swap places. So when we have the variable on the bottom, you can just do that. Go to your calculator, and let's do 15 divided by that number. In your graphing calculator, all you need to do here is just go 15 divided by and hit the answer key. But if you're using this Desmos graphing calculator, there is no answer key. So you can do, you can come back here and say 15, well, it's kind of hard, you can't really hit divided by, but uh, you can do this, you could say like A equals, and you can do 15 divided by A. Okay, that's a little 
work around there. All right. So, anyways, uh, or you'll get a you'll get a close answer if we do 15 divided by 0. 0.700. Whoops. 7002. It's pretty close. Uh, and maybe it's close enough, probably is close enough. So anyways, the standard is use four decimal places if you are typing it like that. So, all right. So we end up with 21.42, all right? So Y is approximately 21.42. There you have it, all right. So that's how we find missing sides, all right? Again, the key is if you know two sides, uh, if we knew two sides, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. But if we all we know is one side and we know one angle, one acute angle in a right triangle, this is only for right triangles, then we can use one of our trig ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent, write an equation, plug in what you know, and solve for what you don't.